Hello, we are coming at you with a very quick uh, special report on marriage equality. The Supreme Court ruled the right way today. I'm going to read from the majority opinion uh, written by Justice Kennedy. The closing remarks were, No union is more profound than marriage, for it embodies the highest ideals of love, fidelity, devotion, sacrifice, and family. In forming a marital union, two people become something greater than once they were. As some of the petitioners in these cases demonstrate, marriage embodies a love that may endure even past death. It would misunderstand these men and women to say they disrespect the idea of marriage. Their plea is that they do respect it, respect it so deeply that they seek to find its fulfillment for themselves. Their hope is not to be condemned to live in loneliness, excluded from one of civilization's oldest institutions. They ask for equal dignity in the eyes of the law. The Constitution grants them that right. The judgment of the Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit is reversed. It is so ordered. And I am joined right now with my wife, Lauren. Hi, everybody. This is really awesome. Uh, you know, we, we knew this was how it was going to go down. Uh, the fact that they only took up the appeal on the one circuit that ruled the wrong direction uh, really kind of showed their hand. And the fact that they lifted the stays on everybody else also showed where they were going to end. So this is awesome. Yeah, we, could, we saw this one coming, but it's still really exciting for it to finally happen. Yeah. And, you know, this likely will will live in infamy uh, along with the Loving decision as one of the landmark rulings of our of of history. Well, now, what is the Loving decision? That was the one that forced interracial marriage on the whole country. Ah, this is exactly like that. And I actually this might go further because they had already firmly established that Blacks had equal rights, where it's not firmly established that the 14th Amendment, or at least hadn't been firmly established that the 14th Amendment applied to the LGBT community, um, but they ruled on the grounds of the 14th Amendment. Which, I'm going to go, I'm going to guess it's going to take just kind of the, the reverse, where now it's just going to be a domino effect of uh, civil rights being granted, um, protections for employment, housing, all that stuff. In Idaho, we're suffering under the government that refuses to add those words to our um, to our law. So I think it's I think it's a, a doomed fight on on that on their part. Yeah. And you know like right now it's it's something like sixty percent of the country supports marriage equality. And at the time of the loving decision it was the numbers were similar. It was a large majority, but it wasn't universal in, in support of interracial marriage. And as soon as that ruling went down, the support just almost completely went to unanimous nationwide. Yeah, there's still some holdouts. And I kind of expect the same thing will happen with marriage equality, with with the right for same-sex marriages. And really the awesome thing here is there is no more opposite-sex marriage and same-sex marriage. It's just marriage. Yeah, that was a nice emphasis that we heard down at the Capitol today. Yeah. That was a nice yeah. nice speech. And you'll hear hear a little bit more on that uh, later. So, Lauren, uh, the, the right wing was so concerned that this would be destroying marriage. Uh, are, are we going to have to get a divorce now? Oh, let's see here. It's been, what, two weeks? Almost. Almost two Tomorrow. weeks. And the sanctity of marriage has officially been scuttled. Yeah, I, th- I think so. I think we're going to have to divorce and then, um, and then you're gonna have to find a woman to marry, right? Yes, I. Yes, my bisexual tendencies will have to go all the way to homosexual tendencies, um, because uh, they just forced me to the yeah. government. Yeah, and they're probably gonna send some, you know, stormtroopers or something to force me to to find a man to to marry, because yeah, I need to be forced to do that. I don't swing that way. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have a problem. <laughs> but that, that is the wonderful thing about buys. They're like, yeah, all right. Either way. <laughs> so, but more seriously, uh, what, what, how, how does, uh, as a, a newlywed uh, in a opposite sex marriage, how does this uh, make you feel? Well, it makes me feel like um, our marriage is more legitimate. It's been legitimized. Um, more so than I think like maybe my sister and 
her wife might feel. <laughs> um, I've been holding out marriage-wise for a long time. Well, not really holding out. The right person just didn't come along. But And then I did. Theoretically, theoretically, I didn't want to get married until everybody could marry. Um, we jumped the ship a little bit by two weeks, but I knew it was going to happen this summer. It was an inevitability. Uh, but I still felt a little bit of guilt because we had something that a whole bunch of my friends and their friends and a good well, chunk of the population couldn't have. Everyone in Idaho could. It was just people in some shitty parts of the country, the Midwest and South, who couldn't. Right. I mean, yeah, some parts of the South. But there was that question of, of if you cross state lines, is it legit or not? Yeah. And you shouldn't have that worry. It's like having a Social Security card. Once you have it, it should be honored everywhere. <laughs> not just, you know, the people who decide whether to honor the federal government or not. Yeah. Yeah. And that's now been fully resolved. And one thing I, I really liked is this ruling was for not just the 50 states. It was for all 50 states and the territories, which means this even applies in Guam and American Samoa and everywhere the American flag flies. Puerto Rico. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's the great thing about the Supreme Court. Now, we do have people who are concerned. They're holding out their hope because of the dissent and the, and the, the idea has been put forward that the Supreme Court is now a, an activist court. Uh, tyrannical is what I, <laughs> what Scalia said. Yeah, so there's going to be a lot of fighting because, I mean, even if half the Supreme, almost half the Supreme Court came out and, and thought that, then you know that the country's just going to, the lawsuits are going to start rolling in. Um, probably headed by our own government here in Idaho. <laughs> they don't have the money to do that. The, hey, they found a million dollars to fight for that. Yeah, they took it from the schools and roads. Yeah, let's l not educate kids and instead fight this abomination. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Moving to, to my feelings on it, uh, one thing that's been interesting is I, for quite a few years, thought marriage was of no value. Agreed. Then I thought it was only of financial value. Agreed. So if you reach the point where it was truly in your best financial interest, then okay. And then I got on board with the marriage equality fight. And you know what? All those queers wanting to get married won me over. Uh, yeah. Um, I, w I went through a very similar uh, step of that. Um, very anti-marriage for a long time. I thought marriage should be uh, disbanded. The government really shouldn't be in, in that mess. Um, if people wanted to have a ceremony at a church, that was their choice. But uh, a government official would still have to basically legalize it. So that, you know, there's there was too much church in it. And I just didn't like it. But um, over time, you know, your, your position changed. And it was it is hard to not get swept up in the excitement and, and this particular fight. And to see friends, several uh, allies who were getting really into it. I mean... I'm sure half the people who were down at the Capitol today were, were straight. Yeah. But they were just as happy that it happened as, as you know, everybody else. And it kind of revitalized I, the idea of marriage. And we, we keep talking, or at least Lauren keeps talking about the Capitol. Uh, we went to the uh, rally they held at the Idaho State Capitol today. It was announced this morning, and uh, there was probably, I'd say, 75 people or so there. It was 100 degrees out. Yes, thankfully they limited it to a half hour. <laughs> and there's no shade. Yeah, so there was just a big flag draping the steps. It was it, lots of people getting selfies. and um, I did. And then lots of people in the shade, which was nice. Yeah, and also a whole lot of people just burning and sweating in the sun. Yeah, they're the, they're the real fighters out there. <laughs> yeah. All right, so now we're going to play some of the interviews that I, I got uh while we were there at the Capitol? Yes, Dustin was hard at work while I was sitting in the shade explaining to everybody how awesome my dogs were. And Bucky, I was, Bucky was wearing a pride scarf. I was pretty happy. And I was sweating. Yes, profusely. Yes. Anyway, uh, we'll get to that, and then you can get on with your day. 
So we're at the Idaho State Capitol in Boise. Uh, today the Supreme Court ruling uh, was awesome, and so there's a rally here. And I managed to snag two of the speakers. Uh, could each of you introduce yourself and then tell me a little bit about why you're so excited this to be is here? This the woman that made it happen. Go for it. My name is Lisa Perry, and I'm the chair of Add the Words. I'm Senator Cherie Buckner-Webb, Minority Leader in the Senate. All right. And so which party Minority would be? Assistant Leader oh, okay. in the Senate. Sorry about that. And Democrat. And so how does this, uh, this ruling make you guys feel? We're really excited. Today's a great day, and people are out celebrating that it's now no longer gay marriage. It's just marriage. I think that justice has been served at long last. You know, sometimes we don't know what we know, don't know. And I think the framers of the Constitution all those years ago, people keep pulling out the Constitution about. As we become more aware, we become uh, brighter, smarter, uh, more compassionate. Uh, we have to make the appropriate changes. And that's exactly what's happened. And that's exactly what the Supreme Court did. They honored all human beings and, and approved and appreciated and, and, and supported marriage, love, and family. Very well said. You know, looking at the, the 14th Amendment, when it was established, it was revolutionary to say that black people were fully were human. people. Yeah. yeah. It's nice that we can now say that all people are people. Yeah, yeah. And, and my hope would be that we would start to treat all people as people. If you listen to Ms. Perry as she was talking, this is one step. And still in the state of Idaho, we denigrate uh, the GLBT community. We must give them full equality, not just partial. Add the words, no more, no less. <laughs> Thank you both very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, why don't you two tell us uh, a little bit about your, or who you are? Well, my name is Elijah Anderson. I'm Jonesy. All right. And uh, why are you guys here? I am here because I am a full supporter of the LGBT community because I am transgender, male. And my friend here is also a supporter. Why don't you? Yeah. Um, I'm gender fluid, and I I've, I've always want to be a part of one of these downtown. I've never really been to one, so I want to just, what a great thing to have as my first event for it ever. It's really cool. It's really supportive, and I love it. Awesome. Awesome. And, yeah, very happy that this happened and very glad to be here. Uh, do, you, do you two feel that this uh, ruling will have any uh, importance in, in your lives? Yes, because um, I'm in love with uh, my significant other, uh, Jordan, and they mean quite a lot to me and they are also gender fluid and if we were to be married they would consider us a homosexual or a straight couple but with this new ruling i think it'll be helping in the future for when uh transgender and these type of relationships are more open so it'd be more expected that we would be married as one we wouldn't just be called a gay couple we would just be a couple and we would be loved for who we are and that really is the important thing here today is, yeah, now it's just marriage. It's just marriage. All right, I have uh, two more attendees here, and uh, would you guys uh, tell us who you are? Sure, my name's John Wynn. And I'm Trish Wynn. And we're here basically just to show our support and solidarity. Um, completely heterosexual, but obviously feel that uh, everybody's equal, and this is something that should have happened a long time ago. Um, you know, luckily Idaho just passed legislation earlier this year that allowed same-sex marriage, but it's oh. great to see the other... Uh, well, which It'd be is nice being, if the legislature yeah, did, had done right. it. <laughs> well, yeah, it was forced through the courts. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's nice to see that the other 26 states that weren't given that option uh, finally able to have that. And granted, there's going to be some, some other uh, processes to go through before it's 100%, you know, people can walk up to the court and get married, but, you know, it's a step in the right direction, and yeah. hopefully here in the next few weeks we see the outcome of it, and it's successful. And you two have the same last name, so I'm guessing you're married. Yes. yes. And uh, do you feel this has any impact whatsoever in your marriage? Absolutely not. No, not yeah. at all. If anything, it just makes me happy that everyone has the same chance that I do. Awesome. To uh, express my love. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. My name is Gretchen Bates. And uh, how does today's ruling make you feel? Uh, excellent. Magnificent. It's a, it's a good day for, every, for the nation and for Idaho. Except that we have to make sure that we do add the four words um, because my friends could be married on Monday, I mean Sunday, and lose their job or housing on Monday. So it's a great day. We're celebrating it. It's wonderful. Awesome. Thank you. 